just at the top and we want to sort of have it feather down and come down in sort of like a nice gradient sort of show the sun at the top and it getting darker as it goes down right and what the, the masking tape is going to do is give us that um, nice sort of sharp edge Right, now I'm just cutting to air just to dry that off and you might already be able to see that we're looking lighter at the top but we've still got that dark brown shadowy colour at the bottom. Right. So that's just a first quick sort of showing you. Hopefully you're just seeing how that's sort of going from dark to lighter. And then if we remove the masking tape, it just keeps it a nice sharp edge. Um, now you don't particularly want to be going off and doing masking tape all over this model because it can be a bit time consuming. And remember, we are trying to show you this on a basic sort of level. So what we can also do is um, using an angle at which we spray the model. So uh, we've got some edges just up here this is where uh, you know the sun is probably going to touch these edges and whatnot again same sort of principle but instead of masking it up what we do is we shoot at it at this angle right instead of like maybe sort of spraying at this angle because we spray at this angle we're going to be spraying the top as well but at this angle just show you now just spray a bit Like so, just build it up nice and lightly. A little bit misty at first. Maybe sort of work our way around a little bit. Hopefully you can sort of see, you know, we've sprayed that, we've got that, and then, oh, there we go, we've got that nice sharp edge. And that is just because of the angle we have sprayed it at. So just to sort of show you that again, maybe sort of show it you, say, here. If we spray at this angle, not like this on top, right? If we spray at this angle, we should be able to sort of spray the back of this model here, but still get a really cool sort of sharp edge to it. Hopefully, you know, you can just see there, we're getting a pretty nice sort of sharp edge on that, even though that is quite a sort of bit of a shallow angle there. Maybe spray a little bit more you know, we can get a really cool sharp edge on that. Um, and that's that's another way of doing it to make it nice, quick and easy. Another way is we can come along and we could get um, some plain printer paper, right? And we could sort of pick, um, maybe we could just pick at the top here. Um, what we can simply do is just lay down, um, try and hold, you know, this is a little bit tricky in the sense of, trying to find the best place to hold but we can get a piece of paper and hold it not um, not sort of stick it down with um, you know tammy masking tape but just simply holding it and then spraying it Ooh, without slipping too much make sure you get it lined up yeah, so we're using the paper as a bit of masking and hopefully as you can see again we've then got a nice sharp edge there. And that's what it's all about. It's sort of taking all your corners and all your angles and just sort of um, highlighting them and giving them those sort of sharp edges. And it really sort of brings things alive. And that is basically modulation. It's sort of basically um, highlighting all your model. And you literally sort of want to be going around, picking out all those places where sunlight is going to hit your model and taking that edge and either masking it, shooting it at the right angle that you don't have to mask it, or come in with some paper or even post-it stamps um, and, and get those nice sharp 
angles. You still don't have to um, have the sharp angles as well. I mean, you can always, you know, if you really sort of want to, you can always uh, say with our little hatch here, maybe we could just do what's called um, bleaching, is where we take our hatch here and we just sort of lightly spray. Oh, I think my needle's clogging up a little bit, but you just sort of spray in the middle of say a hatch and as you can see that sort of brings it to life if you do sort of have your needle end starting to um, dry up what you want to do um, take off your guard and then all we've got to do is just wipe the needle end quick blast through wipe the needle end all right and if you are a beginner you know put your guard back on and you should be all good to spray again um, so that's what I'm going to do um, all over this model you know getting those nice sort of um, hard edges um, highlighted up so now it's all done I can show you a little bit more sort of closer up um, about modulation hopefully you can see sort of at the top here we've got lots of sort of edges where I've just you know sprayed in that highlight making a nice sort of sharp edge you know we've got a nice sort of sharp edge here you know it's going from light across to dark and then we've got light going across to dark hopefully you are seeing there how when picking out all the individual panels finding out where the lights gonna hit that panel and we're gonna spray that nice and, and, and lighter. Um, now, what we're gonna do now is, there is another highlight, right? Well, should we say this is um, the highlight, which is a brown highlight, which is AK4041. Now, with this one, we wanna do pretty much the same as what we did with our brown base. Um, the only difference is you've gotta be a little bit more careful in how much you apply this one, because with our brown base, I mean, you can't really sort of go wrong too much. You can't really sort of go over the top too much because it is the base color. Um, really, it, you know, you, you can sort of really sort of go heavy with it and it doesn't really matter as long as you've got a bit of that um, shadow brown sort of coming through. But with this one, this one is sort of like a really sort of lighter colour and can be a little bit too intense if you go too far. I've already got some in our colour cup here just to speed things up. Um, but I'll just quickly sort of, you know, we'll do the quick sort of angle thing where we angle our airbrush in a way that our overspray isn't going to hit any other panels. Um, and it'll just give us a nice sharp edge. So let's just nice and lightly just blast a bit out of the airbrush it's just nice and lightly hit those and as you can see that is a much more stronger sort of in your face color it will come out at you a lot more let's maybe just angle this just at the back here just to get a sharp line going across there as we've done as you can see you know that is coming out a lot lot sharper um, and again you know, using the paper trick, right, just at the top here, on the top of our um, hull. So straighten that maybe just a little bit better. All right, we can put this on here. Now, as I say, because it's so more, much more in your face, I'm just trying to get this to lay nicely and get you on camera. Okay, because this is so much more of a stronger colour, Hold on, I'm in trouble here. I think basically because the piece of paper has sort of gone a bit wrinklier because you know I've been using it. So you know, don't be afraid to get out another piece of paper. Right, and that should be a bit more straighter. There we go. Right, so again, you want to do it a little bit lighter. So we don't want to be spraying as much as we did with a with the base right you know we only need that little bit of a sharper edge just at the top right we don't have to bring it down shall we say so we're going from our nice dark brown shadow and then it's we've got our base brown and then just at the tip we've got that highlight going on just up there and hopefully as you can see it just brings things out a, a, a lot more i'm um, just showing you let's just do a few more just to sort of show you maybe just we can just highlight across the tops here 
really sort of getting that angle so we we get that sharp edge. There we go. So let's get a pot of paint underneath there. And again, we can sort of use our piece of paper, get it in the right position. And then we can quickly just do a, a light highlight. Right. Just remember not to go too far with this colour. Right, because as you can see, we could overpower this very, very quickly. Um, and as an added little thing, once you've sort of done all that, what we can do is we can actually get out the paintbrush. Um, with these paints, they are cool in the sense that we can paint with them. I'm, I'm just going to quickly whop out my Series 7. Right, and just to quickly sort of show you, we can pick out areas that are really sort of going to stand out in the light, that are really going to have that sunlight shining off those sort of really sort of high point areas. So uh, we have um, like a little handle just here. We could just really sort of using the side of the paintbrush really sort of bring out these areas just here. Um, we could also, we've got some little hatches as well, just here. Let's get some more on the paintbrush, not too much. We can just highlight these as well with the paintbrush. And, you know, if you really want to sort of go around, you could end up sort of going around and doing the bolts as well, maybe these high point bolts. You know, maybe just give them a nice little paint as well. And it'll just add all these, you know, extra bits of flavor um, to the model. So I'm just gonna go around now and, you know, finish off the final highlight stage to this. Um, now, this is sort of basic when it comes to modulation. I know when it also comes to modulation, you can do so many, so many layers. I mean, you can, I, I know there is, um, there are some sets you can buy where you've got six different colors of modulation. You can also combine um, pre-shading and post-shading to sort of turn one color into more than one color by using pre-shaded, but that's going a bit more advanced. Uh, but just to sort of let you know, you can go even further with this. Um, and I'll just get this finished and I'll show you the end result. So there is all the spray work all nicely done and hopefully you've sort of seen that transition from going from our shadow, our brown shadow, moving through our base color to our highlight and you know it really transitions um, from going darker to lighter which is what it's all about and taking you know all your different panels and giving all your different panels that nice edge of a highlight um, which does really sort of bring alive your spray work because compared to um, we've got our second model here as an example and um, this has just been sprayed our golf war armor uh, and nothing else no highlighting no nothing and you know the difference between you know these two these two uh, models here it is quite drastic you know this is very sort of flat plain base color um, not so interesting but yet this one is a lot more lively and a lot more interesting uh, and will sort of show off this piece a lot more uh, what we've also got to remember is is uh, even though this Land Rover is flat it is just the base color with all these um, AK Interactive products, you can still liven this up. So even if say you're not very competent with your airbrushing yet, and maybe you don't feel like you could uh, you know, do this whole modulation thing, um, you can still liven this model up and make it still look professional um, by using all these AK Interactive products. And, and that's the whole idea of me sort of doing one modulation and one sort of flat, is you can see at the end that you can still get a professional finish even with or without modulation. But you know that's for later on. Now, um, what's gonna happen now is we, we sort of, the next stage really is going off and doing Declan. Now, when it comes to Declan, there is a tutorial on Declan on the Genesis Models website under the tutorial section. So you could go there and look at how to put 
decals on. So I'm not going to show it in this series, um, but to be able to put decals on, as well as um, when we come around to put all these AK Interactive weathering things on, um, we need to seal in this um, this coat. Now these paints by AK, Interact AK Interactive are you know fairly durable. Um, there are paints out there like Vallejo, Tamiya. Um, once you've sprayed them on, it's so easy just to slightly nick it with your nail and it scratches and they can be very delicate. These are, you know, quite durable, but still, you know, you wanna, after spraying, you wanna seal in any any work really with a gloss coat, which um, there's lots of gloss coats out there, but my preference, I do like um, Alclad's to Aqua Gloss. Um, this is a really sort of cool um, gloss coat because for a start, we can just bring in our airbrush and we just literally pour straight in. There's no need to shake the bottle, right? We just pour straight in, neat, and that is at the right thickness for us to just spray through the airbrush, nice and perfect, no messing about. And just like with all the spray work that we've been doing, right, we want to start off with that really nice, light, misty coat really light just like so um, just to allow uh, our gloss work to nicely bite and stick to the paintwork we can dry off again as usual because it's only a misty coat we can dry it off by pressing down the trigger and then we can come in with a sort of a lighter coat and then we want to build that up um, you know slowly letting each layer dry for about two or three coats just to nicely lock it in so that you know if you do accidentally knock scratch the model you're potentially not going to scratch your paintwork because that gloss coat is going to lock it in make it harder and protect it as well as um, it, it creates a barrier between the paintwork and when you're using decklin solutions uh, when you're using all these AK Interactive products, it makes that barrier to protect your paintwork. So, you know, definitely put on a gloss coat. Um, a last little note on the gloss coat is what you may notice is the gloss coat will sort of darken up a little bit. Um, and what this is, is just, um, you know, it's just the effect of gloss and matte. Um, sort of changing sort of like the, the color slightly the gloss will sort of darken it basically and then at the end when we come on to do that final matte coat to mattify everything it will then lighten things up so don't worry if the color goes really dark and you know your spray work starts to fade a little bit um, that is just a gloss coat when we put the matte coat on it will lighten back up and it'll sort of it does tend to bring the detail out uh, of your spray work again so you know don't worry about things darken up with a gloss coat and that is the end of episode one part two of um, spraying and doom modulation effects the next episode episode two we're going to be looking at doing some chipping which is a nice quick easy episode on a really effective way of doing chipping um, to add that next layer of weathering to our models Thank you.